you are looking for a group of five team to cheer for a, a dark horse in the world of college football, someone who no one really pays attention to unless you are a enthusiast of college football at a deeper level. You can look at the Fresno State Bulldogs as a potential team to pay attention to in 2024. Today, we take a deep dive into that program, look at what we should expect in 2024, and go through the players that you need to know. Before we do that, though, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video, share it with your fellow Bulldog fans. Make sure that you are supporting this deep dive because without you, this is not possible. This series is not possible without you. The channel is not possible without you. And so far, the support has been phenomenal. I'd like to keep that going. And it's been really fun to see. So let's keep it going. Without further ado, let's dive into Fresno State and see what we should expect in 2024. We start with the coaching staff. Jeff Tedford has done a great job of getting this program to continue what we saw in his first stint with the program and then with what Kalen DeBoer did before he left for Washington. Now, his health is going to be a concern after what we saw this past offseason. Hopefully everything is okay. I think that he's great at what he does, but as we all know, nothing is more important than you know, still being here. It doesn't matter if you are coaching or not. I just hope that everything's okay. Maybe you got everything figured out. And if if so, you're looking at a team that's in good hands while he's running the show. Pat McCann is one of the most underrated offensive coordinators in college football. He did a great job of calling plays last year, and we could expect a lot of exciting things in 2024 as well. This is a team that went nine and four. Their offense at times showed really exciting flashes and then also I think struggled a little bit, but McCann is a good play caller. And on the flip side of that, Kevin Coyle is going to call the defense, a defense that to me is super underrated, a couple things they need to do better. And there's going to be a uh, influx of talent because of the departures that we've seen. And that's not a surprise over what we've seen from this group the last few years, but this is a group that again is very underrated with how they compete in the mountain West. And I think a lot of people just gloss over them because they are a group of five team. And no one is really anticipating a Fresno State team to make a run uh, outside of Fresno State and a handful of probably other people. But for the most part, most people don't pay attention to Fresno State, which is disappointing. But this is a fun team to watch. In terms of the transfer portal and what they added versus what they lost, I think they lost a little bit more than they gained. But this is a a coaching staff that knows that they recruit kind of with that in mind, not that they're, they want people to leave, but they know that they're going to need backups. That being said, they brought in a couple of players that are worth keeping an eye on. The biggest one has to be Corey Foreman coming in from USC. The former five-star recruit is somehow choosing Fresno state over a lot of other programs. So that was really interesting to see. So that's something to keep an eye on there. Uh, the other one to keep an eye on is Raylan Sharp. We'll dive in more to what he can do for that offense. But this is still a solid job by this coaching staff to bring in talented players to replace some of the, the guys that they lost. This passing tech definitely needed some help when you lost some of the talented players that were on this offense last year. But this should be a group that is still fine despite some of those losses. and. That offense is really, really fun to watch when everything is going well. The biggest player to watch is Mikey Keene. He is the, the, the guy that makes this offense go. And when he is healthy, which is probably the biggest concern for this offense, is keeping Mikey Keene healthy. When he is healthy, he's really fun to watch. The former UCF transfer just wasn't in the right system with the Knights, and I thought that there were a lot of things he did really well. He's really fun to watch uh, throw on the run, someone who can make plays, adapt to certain circumstances, and he is someone who has good arm talent to get the ball to his playmakers. Nearly threw for 3,000 yards last year, 24 touchdowns. You'd like to see him get those 10 interceptions down a little bit because this offense was a top 25 offense last year. They averaged 282 yards through the air. So that's something that can, I should say, it's going to continue in 2024. So it's going to all go through Mike Keene. But again, you need to keep him healthy. Keeping him upright is obviously a huge part of that. But this is an offense that runs through him. 
and he's really fun to watch when he's on the field. Joining him in the backfield is going to be Malik Sherrod once again, nearly rushed for 1,000 yards in 2023, and this is a group that is going to need to step up in a big way. They finished 118th in rushing, so this group likes to throw the football. I think with the amount of talent they lost at wide receiver, the rushing attack might be a little bit more of a focal point in 2024. So guys like Merlik Sherrod, Elijah Gilliam will play bigger roles. Devin Rivers is another one to keep an eye on. That's a name that people have been familiar with for a little while now, but this is a group that has solid depth, should be able to make some big time plays. And also King can run a little bit too. So you're going to see all three of these guys step up in a big way. The, again, we go back to the biggest question with this offense is, is Keen going to be able to stay healthy? Because if he's not, you have to turn to guys like Jaden Mandel. You have to look at uh, maybe a guy like Josh Wood, Jack Jacobs. So those are inexperienced players that you don't actually trust right now. No pass attempts between the three of them. So that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, they're very young, but if Mikey King can stay healthy, you don't necessarily have to worry about them outside of putting them in for, you know, cleanup time when you're up big because Fresno State is a team that can put up points in a hurry when they are playing really well and playing together. But again, it's going to come down to Mikey King's health. And if he's healthy, this is a very, very dangerous offense. Now, we talked about the wide receivers. They do lose some talent. We've seen some really talented players over the last uh, few years for this offense, whether it's in Kalen DeBoer's offense, whether uh, Jeff Tedford is running the show. Jalen Moss was kind of considered the third option last year. He's back and could be considered by many to be the number one option. And he'll be fun to watch in that new role. How does he step up? for a group that needs him to be more of an impact player than he was last year. A little bit on the uh, thinner frame at 168 pounds, so that's a concern in terms of durability, but we've seen the big playability. We've seen what he's capable of doing, and that's really exciting if you're a Fresno State fan. Again, Mikey Keene's going to like what he has. Uh, another guy who kind of flew under the radar, Max Alina, another guy who's a little bit on the leaner frame at 174 pounds, someone who is ready to take another step forward and be more of an impact player for Fresno State this year. Uh, that, that kind of fits into what a, a lot of guys are coming back for. They are ready to take that step forward and be more of an impact player. Josiah Freeman also fits in that a little bit bigger. You could say he's the, the beefier one at 193 pounds. So it's not a big group by any means, but this is a group that can be explosive. This is a group that can definitely do a lot of damage to an opposing defense and make them second guess what they're trying to do. And that's really exciting. We talked about Raylan Sharp earlier, the Missouri State transfer at 991 yards last year, someone who can be another explosive weapon. That's seven touchdowns as well. He'll fit into that rotation. So again, this is going to be, and, and with how much this group likes passing, you're going to see four receiver sets. So you need depth at this position. Tim Greer is another one that could figure into that as well. So there's a lot of relative unknown players that are going to play bigger roles at wide receiver. And then maybe your tight end position is a group that takes a step forward. You lost your starting, starting tight end to the transfer portal. So Jake Baus is someone who could step up there only 30 yards last year on just four catches. Uh, Cameron Beecham is another player, solid size at 6'4", 235 pounds. So you have guys who are uh, at the tight end position a little bit on the leaner side of things, but that shouldn't be surprising given how much this group wants to throw. Again, Mikey Keene, very talented passer, someone who can get the ball to his playmakers. I like what Pat McCann and Jeff Tedford want to do offensively. They're going to find ways to get these guys the football and from there, it's just on them to make plays. And we know that they're capable of doing it. Jalen Moss was really fun to watch. Granted, he had other options in front of him. So that is something that will be a question. But you know that he's talented. You know what he's capable of doing. Everyone's excited about Max Alina too. So you have options. It's not that this, this roster is depleted. There's definitely not a question about that. It's just going to come down to you have the right guys in place to – take on different roles. Do you, can Jalen Moss be a leader of that group? Maybe it's Delina, maybe it's Freeman, maybe it's Raylan Sharp. You, you just don't know. And we'll find out, but this is still a really good group. It's just, you have to see some guys take some steps forward. 
Now, keeping the quarterback upright and moving the ball on the ground shouldn't be too much of a concern with this experienced offensive line. Somehow, Jacob Swomer is back. 24 games played, 24 games started. As the, I think the biggest thing is that he is not your prototypical tackle. 6'3", 284 pounds. So definitely does not have the size to his advantage, but he is a big-time player who has been a solid tackle for this team. And, and he surprised a lot of people by coming back. He surprised Fresno State by deciding, hey, I, I'm coming back for another year. I want to make a run at a Mountain West championship. And with the guys they have around him, it's easy to see why. Osmar Velez comes in with 23 games of, of experience. Moz Vavau is back with 40 games uh, starting. He is a veteran that has moved around the offensive line. He is someone that's going to be a big-time impact player for this group up front. Uh, Julian Palendo comes in and doesn't have a start yet, but it played in 23 games. Braylon Nelson has 30 games of experience under his belt. A little bit more of that prototypical tackle size at 6'6", 320. So we will see what happens there. The other thing is that Swomer could play some center too. So you have some position versatility with a couple of these guys which is Hughes. And you also have uh, other players that could step up. Uh, Kingsley Ugu is another one that doesn't have a ton of experience, but the staff really likes what they have in him. You also have certain players that match that same uh, same mold. Uh, Campbell McCard is one of them. Matai Bell, uh, Roland Fullwood. They all have a few games of experience, but you'd like to see them get a little bit more in terms of reps. There's definitely some potential in this group, but what does it mean for them when they finally do hit the field and have to step up for the first time really in their careers in terms of the backups? The starters, there's really not a question about what they're capable of doing. If you have to question anyone, it's probably Polendo, but he has 23 games, so he knows what is expected. Playing in the Mountain West, he knows what to anticipate, this is a veteran group. It's just going to maybe be a question about is there depth behind them? That'll probably be the biggest question there. And if if the question is they're, they're good to go, then you're going to see a lot of good things from Mikey Keene. He's going to have time to throw the ball. Your playmakers are going to make big plays because your offensive line is creating space for them. And that is going to be a winning formula and a winning formula to get this group more balanced. The defense to me, should still be a very good group. You lost a number of veterans over the last few years, and Fresno State's defense has been, to me, slept on. This is a defense that continues to make plays, continues to be solid. Yes, there are certain concerns. Stopping the run is one of them, but I think that changes this year. You have a talented group that brings some good size to the def defensive line, and that's going to be really fun to watch. This is a group that has largely sat behind a lot of talented players, and now they're getting their first chance to step up and play bigger roles. You saw that a little bit last year with a couple of guys. Devo Bridges, as well as Jacob Holmes, played solid roles for Fresno State last year, combined for 15 tackles for loss, eight and a half sacks. Those are two guys on, on that side of the ball. That will be very disruptive for Fresno State. They'll be very fun to watch, and that's going to make life easier for the guys behind them. If they're able to be disruptive once again and improve upon those numbers, I think that that's a group, those two guys for sure, that can be better. And stopping the run it starts with being disruptive. Obviously, you have to play your gap. You have to know what you're doing. But if you're finding ways to be disruptive and getting in the backfield, that makes life way easier for the guys behind you. Now, if you're commanding a lot of extra attention and teams have to send help your way, that also helps the guys behind them because they don't have to worry about as many blockers. Holmes and Bridges are two of those players that will make life easier. Gabriel Lightfoot is someone who's stepping into a bigger role this year. Had 20 tackles last year, one and a half tackles for loss. Someone who, again, is going to play a bigger role. Is he ready for that responsibility? That's going to be a big question. And then Corey Foreman, we talked about him. I still have no idea how Fresno State got Corey Foreman, but I think that was one of the best additions by a group of five team uh, in terms of potential. Corey Foreman is a very talented player, someone who will find life at the group of five could be a little bit easier than his time at USC. 
someone who could be an absolute monster and he doesn't have to be the hero. That's the, the best thing about this is they didn't get Corey Foreman because they absolutely needed him. They got him because they did need him, but they didn't, they didn't desperately need him. They had plenty of talent surrounding this defense and they, if they had the right guys in place already, getting Corey Foreman was just kind of a bonus. Yes. He's more talented than anybody they have on that roster, but I think that Edford and the staff have done such a good job of getting the right guys in place that it was almost just like a cherry on top sort of situation, but he's still going to be really fun to watch. He still will be an impact player and he'll be someone that's going to help a group that finished 34th in passing do that again and help a group that finished 97th against the run improve there. Now, when it comes to depth behind some of these guys, the, the defensive end position is really interesting because Charles Rumlinger is back and it should be really fun to watch. And Jason Jax has a great name and he is someone who will play a bigger role as well. You're going to see him more in that rotation. So he is someone who has a little bit higher expectations for him in 2024, but that's okay. That's what they want. That's part of why you bring these guys onto campus. You expect them to do bigger things and you have the right players in place for that. Jarius Satelli is coming in from San Jose state. Doesn't have a ton of experience at the tackle position, but that the tackle position probably is the biggest question for this defense. You have a bunch of talented players, and Jacob Holmes and Gabriel Lightfoot will lead the way. But can Satelli be that guy that they need him to be? Can a guy like Kavika Bumgardner can he be that guy? There's plenty of guys who've seen seen the field for Fresno State, and then you get Satelli coming in from San Jose State. So it's not a question of talent. I think that this staff has done a great job of bringing the right guys in and developing the guys they have already in place. And that's going to be huge. That's a huge thing to have. I think that's the right formula to have. And this, uh, some people expect this group to compete for a Mountain West championship. And that's been kind of the expectation under Tedford. This is the year for them to do it. Even though they have a ton of turnover at certain positions, and maybe depth is a concern or experience is a concern, this is still a group that has the ability to take things to the next level. Now, the linebacker position is also interesting because when you look at what Fresno State had last year, you have a group that made plays, and you have a group that was experienced. And when you have experience like that, losing it, typically means that you take a step back at the position. And when you look at what a guy like Lavelle Bailey did last year, a very experienced player that got guys in the position, normally losing a player like him would hurt quite a bit. But getting someone like Malachi Langley to come back and not hit the transfer portal or not move on was huge. 84 tackles last year, five tackles for loss. A guy like Phoenix Jackson is stepping into a bigger role, though he saw plenty of time where he shouldn't have too much trouble transitioning to a starter as a full-time starter, I should say. 34 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, also had an interception last year. The depth behind them is where you might have some questions. Tyler Mello had 15 tackles last year. Tua Sivi Nomura is going to be really fun to watch as well. 13 tackles, two tackles for loss, one sack. So it's going to be a question of more of, of experience rather than ability. We know that these guys can make plays. We've seen that to various different degrees. Langley is obviously the most experienced of that group, and, and Mella and Nomura have more to prove, but we know that they're capable of doing it. It's just, can you do that long-term? Can you do that more consistently? And can you make plays uh, when other guys around you aren't necessarily stepping up because the defensive line obviously plays a huge role in that. The linebackers are in a way, the quarterback of the defense and Langley inherits a new role. Lavelle Bailey was that leader of that defense last year. Langley is going to be the guy that everyone turns to when someone doesn't know how to get lined up. Someone doesn't know what coverage they're playing. Langley is going to be one of those guys that communicates that he's going to make sure that this defense is tough once again. And I really like this unit. I know what they're capable of doing, and the linebackers are just part of that, but they play a really big role as well. Now, the secondary, even with the players that 
you lost from 2024. The secondary is still extremely talented. Yes, you lost Maurice Norris. Yes, you lost Carlton Johnson. Those are two big players to lose at on any given team. But when you look at the talent they have returning, I, I don't want to say there's not a reason for concern, but there's plenty of reasons to be excited. Cam Lockridge, when fully healthy, is one of the best corners in college football, period. Not the group of five, not the Mountain West, college football. He is that good. I think that he has a future in the NFL. He just has to stay healthy. If he can find a way to stay healthy, you're going to see exactly what he's capable of doing. He, he's done it at Fresno State. He, is, he did it at Hawaii. He's going to do it at the next level, too. Again, health is going to be his biggest obstacle. If he stays healthy, he is, again, one of the best corners. If not, uh, he's definitely the best corner to me, I think, in, in the Mountain West. There's plenty of competition. But at his peak, Cam Lockridge is in a, a league of his own within that conference. He is that good. But, again, certain things have prevented him from being on the field, especially Last year with the injury, that's probably the biggest concern for him. When he's on the field, though, he's really fun to watch. Now, opposite of him is a guy with a very interesting name in Alzillian Hamilton. He is a, a solid player last year. He was he's thrust into the, a more of a prominent role because of injuries like Lockridge's. So he is someone who stepped up in a big, big way and comes back and then the staff expects big things from him once again. If he can find a way to be as effective as he was last year, then we're going to see a lot of good things. Justin Houston had a solid year in 2021, looking to get back on track in 2024. Six foot three, 185 pounds, someone who has a good frame at the nickel position, someone who is ready to be a major factor. And if the cornerback and nickelback positions are set, Fresno State feels pretty good about what they have at safety. Dean Clark comes back after breaking off three passes last year, 83 tackles to go alongside of that. Uh, Cameron Braca is another player to keep an eye on. Underrated safety and 38 tackles, three tackles for loss. Someone who is more involved in, than he was the year before. Same with Dean Clark. And now they're going to be veterans on this defense. And this defense for all three levels looks like it's going to be a fun group to watch a tough unit to beat. And again, Fresno state has this, I don't know how to describe it. The last couple of years, this has been a defense that plays with a chip on their shoulder. Probably is the best way to describe it. They play as a unit and that's, what's made them really good last year, a little bit less like that. And you saw some, some things not go their way, but this is a group when they're playing for each other and they're playing fundamentally sound football and they're all doing their responsibilities, you're going to have a tough time beating Fresno State. And with the offense maybe needing some time to figure things out, the defense might have to step up. The, the secondary is going to be able to do that. And we haven't even talked about the depth. The starters are just that exciting. Uh, a guy like Julian Neal is going to figure in that rotation. If Lockridge goes down for whatever reason or Hamilton even goes down, Julian Neal can step up and play a, a big role there. Jakari Embry comes in and could play a big role as well. The transfer, it could step up if they need him to be, but at worst, he provides depth that they desperately need. Dane Davis and, and Cozy Agina is going to be a good combination behind those two starting safeties with Clark and Braca. You're going to see that this group is just fine. I don't have any concerns about this group outside of health is the, is the base concern. But even then, you're still looking at a group that is just fine and a group that will once again be one of the better groups defending the past in all of college football. Again, this is not just group of five. This is not just the Mountain West. This is one of the better secondaries in the country, and you're going to see that if they are able to stay healthy. Now, strengths and concerns for this team – uh, there's really not a ton that you're uh, going to be super concerned about. And, and the strengths really stand out. And we've kind of already discussed it. To me, wide receiver is a strength. Yes, you have some concerns about uh, depth. 
but you definitely have a lot of talent. Moss is going to be really fun to watch. Delina's ready to take that step forward. Freeman's also ready to take that step forward. Raylan Sharp was a great addition in the transfer portal. So you have plenty of talent there. The offensive line, I don't have concerns about the offensive line. Maybe depth, but offensive line to me is in, in good hands. The secondary, we just bragged about them for however long. They are a good group as well. Quarterback depth is probably the biggest concern to me, which is makes that Mikey Keene's healthy X factor of this team. If Mikey Keene is healthy, Fresno State is a contender. If Mikey Keene goes down, that's when you start having concerns. That That's when you start worrying about Fresno State and what they can do. But when healthy, they're fine. Running back depth could be a little bit of a concern as well. I mean, you could probably put, you know, other positions in there, but running back depth outside of Sherrod and Gilliam are probably the biggest question there. Linebacker experience is something that you're maybe a little bit concerned about. But again, I, I like the experience they do have. It's just that they don't have a ton of it. Langley is the most experienced. Phoenix Jackson's solid there, I'd say. Outside of that, you have guys who have experience, but is it enough? That's going to be something people keep an eye on with this team. Now, when we flip to the schedule, this is a tougher schedule than I anticipated. And part of that is the fact that Oregon State and Washington State are joining the Mountain West rotation. So it's going to be tougher for a lot of teams that especially if you play if you have to play both of them. The Mountain West, though, to me, is just a, a tough conference to win. And Vegas also thinks that with the eight eight wins that they project Fresno State to have. Now, the, the game against Michigan is an automatic loss. You are starting your own one. If somehow Fresno State figures out how to win that game, I will be floored. But that just speaks to how good Michigan is. Now, granted, if things go well for Fresno State, they figure some things out early. You're gonna we're gonna be talking about the Fresno State Michigan game for a little while, but I think Michigan is just too talented uh, to even make that a, a conversation for very long. Sacramento State w- should be a win. New Mexico State should be a win because New Mexico State is going to be, I believe much worse than they were last year. With Jerry Kill leaving, as well as a lot of key players, New Mexico State is not the team that they once were. At New Mexico, Bronco Mendehall, I think, is going to do a great job with the Lobos. I think getting them early in the season is better than late because this is the team that I, I think under Mendehall is going to find find out that the longer they play together, the more they're going to play for each other and the better they're going to be. So playing them early is the key. They also then have another tough test by traveling to UNLV. That's a team that competed for the Mountain West Championship. So that's going to be a tough game. Washington State at home is, even though it's it's Washington State, that's still, you can view that as a Power 5 game. That's going to be tough. Nevada doesn't have too many concerns, though. So you at least get something to, to bounce back on. San Jose State while going under a transition into the Ken Neumatololo era, should still be a tough team. Hawaii at home, I think Hawaii is going, is, is, well, Hawaii is a sleeper team in the Mountain West. Not many people are talking about them. The fact that they get this game at home is pretty big to me. At Air Force, despite the fact that Air Force lost nearly every single starter that was relevant last year, outside of, you know, quarterback and a running back, Air Force is going to be tough. That offense is just so difficult to prepare for. And if this defense isn't where we think it's going to be, that could be a tough game as well. Colorado State, another sleeper. They are a team under Jay Norvell that are ready to take a step forward in terms of competing for the Mountain West title. So keep an eye on them. And then finishing the year at UCLA is just not a great way. So starting the year with with a Big Ten team and finishing with another Big Ten team, that, that's tough. Though UCLA, will see what they look like towards the end of the year. To me, the ceiling for this team is 9-3. and three. I think that the Michigan game is a for sure loss, and then UCLA game is probably a loss as well. But then there are a number of other games that, that even if things are going right, Fresno State's just had some random games that they struggle with. So there, there's probably another game on this schedule where they slip up a little bit. Floor to me is four and eight. There, there are some positions that if they don't figure things out, 
it could be a long season. So if everything fails, it's a four and eight season. I, I think realistically, you're looking at a seven and five team. I think you're closer to that ceiling of nine and three than you are to the floor. So seven and five, eight and four. I, I think I would stay away from the over until you've seen what some of these pieces, the positions that need depth look like. So if you figure out that this is a team that's ready to go, then you're feeling good about that over. But eight wins feels like they're going to reach that mark and that mark exactly. And still going to be a fun group, still a really fun group to watch under Jeff Tedford. If you need to watch some underrated players, Mikey Keene's one of those guys. Malik Sherrod doesn't get enough love. J- Jalen Moss, Magdalena, uh, Cam Lockridge, I obviously am very high on him. That secondary pretty much all by itself is worth watching. This is a team that's very fun to pay attention to, and they'll be fun early in the season. The, the Michigan game might kill some of that excitement, but when things get going, this is going to be a really fun team to watch. Jeff Hedford. If he can stay healthy, if uh, last year or this past offseason, I should say, was uh, just kind of a, a scare, then hopefully that's all that it was. But Fresno State is set to make another really exciting run. It's just a matter of how close they, can they get to that ceiling in 2024.